graphic designs and video editing skills welcomes you to another adobe photoshop tutorial now i had a comment from a cherished viewer that says hello sir please can you dive in depth into adobe photoshop workspace customization that's panel customization keyboard shortcuts and menus toolbar customization and save that workspace as a custom workspace based on this comment i replied thank you i will produce a video on that so stay tuned based on this comment and i'm going to walk you through the workspace of adobe photoshop we are going to identify the default workspace and how to create our custom workspace and also federally show you how you can reset your workspace and also at the end you can delete a custom workspace so let's jump into adobe photoshop workspace and start exploring this feature that is custom workspace now i have adobe photoshop opened and this is the current workspace that i am operating now if you want to identify the current workspace you are working within you move to the top right corner and click on this workspace icon and we have these options here and you can see that essentials is the current workspace we have other workspace here we have 3d and when you click on it this is the look and feel of 3d workspace when you choose graphic and web this is the workspace of graphic and web and when you move and choose motion this is the motion workspace so you can glance through this individual default workspace that are available in photoshop so if i choose painting i'm going to have the workspace of painting and the last default workspace is photography and this is the workspace of photography so based on the kind of operation or tax that you frequently work within adobe photoshop that depends on the kind of workspace you are going to choose so if you are working within the photography environment it means that you are going to choose the workspace of photography if you work within the motion or graphic web then you should know the kind of workspace you are going to choose now how can we create our own custom workspace and save that workspace that can be permanently available whenever you want to work with it but you have the option to also delete if you don't need that particular workspace so let's jump in and see how we can create our own workspace in adobe photoshop i'll jump back to the workspace and then i'm going to choose essentials but before then i have already created this custom workspace and i'm going to delete that so that we can have a better and clear understanding on how custom workspace work so i'm going to choose delete workspace and then make sure that custom workspace is selected and i'm going to choose delete if you don't have that option here you click on the drop down arrow and choose the custom workspace then you choose delete you have the option to choose yes if you are confirming this particular option now when i move back I don't have that custom workspace selected therefore i'm going to choose essentials then for better understanding i'm going to select reset essentials so this is the look and feel of essential workspace whenever you get access to adobe photoshop for the first time this is how the workspace is going to look and this is the default workspace in adobe photoshop the question comes again how can we create our own custom workspace when you choose new workspace in this option you get this beautiful dialog box that says new workspace and we have name that is the default name given to this that is untitled one you can change this name and when you move below this name field we have capture panel locations will be saved in this workspace keyboard shortcuts menus and toolbar are optional and we have all these checkboxes beside these options so if you are going to customize keyboard shortcuts then you have to check this box if you are going to customize some menus 
you have to check this box and you have to customize some toolbar you're also going to check this box and all these options are going to include the panel locations or the customization of your panels and other tools and that is going to be your custom workspace so before we create our custom workspace we need to customize our panels that is going to be the first thing that we are going to do and also customize our keyboard shortcuts menus and also toolbar before we create that particular workspace so i'm going to close this option now the first customization i'm going to apply within this workspace is to locate my panel option and customize it now when you get to this section this section is called the panel properties or the panel options this is where you have so many options you can choose from we have the color option the swatches gradient patterns and we have properties adjustment layers we have the libraries and when we move below we have the layers panel we have channels and we have path now i'm going to customize these panel options based on my preference now i want the layers panel to be on this workspace that is this section so i'm going to click and drag this to this section now i'm going to click on this arrow so that i can adjust this layers panel and position it at this particular area so this is my layers panel and the next two i want to have beside the layers panel is the color palette i'm going to click and drag collapse and then stretch this up and the next tool i want to add to this section is the properties panel click and then stretch it and the last tool is the adjustment layer click and stretch it so you can see how i am having personal customization to these options in this particular workspace now libraries is something that i don't often use i'm going to right click and choose close and also i'm going to right click on patterns and choose close i'm going to add the gradient to this particular vertical bar so that i can have only the swatches here and for the swatches i am going to collapse it so that i can have more space here to have a view of my project or my canvas and my available tools which are placed here i'm going to also move this toolbar from this section and i'm going to collapse it in two columns so i'm going to click on this bar and then place this particular toolbar below the adjustment layer so this is how i want to have my panels my tools organized in this workspace so whenever i want to work with the swatches i'm going to click on this arrow and that expand and i can choose any color from this swatches panel and when i'm done with any operation within this particular panel then i collapse it if i want to have options on the gradient i click on it once and i have all these options for the gradient panel and when i'm done i can click here or click on this to collapse and then we have the comments and also we have the history when i click on this i have the history and comments tab available and when i'm done controlling this particular pin i can click on it to collapse so this gives me the room to have my personal usage and also customization of this workspace so when i want to work with the layers panel i can click on it and that expand and if i want to select any object in this layers panel i can click on that particular object and work with it and when i'm done i can collapse it and then i have my layers panel positioned in this particular section if i want to work with the colors panel i click on it and that expand i can choose any color i want to work with it within my canvas and when i'm done i click on it to collapse the same applies to the properties panel click work within this pin then collapse adjustment layer work within this pin then collapse and when i move below the adjustment panel i have this toolbar available 
and this is the toolbar that consists of all the photoshop tools which can help you to draw type and also to move items within your canvas so this is the toolbar and i prefer this toolbar to be placed here for quick access now i am done with the positionings of these panels and tools the next thing i'm going to configure is the toolbar and this is the toolbar i'm going to customize this toolbar and the first customization that i have applied to this toolbar is making this in two columns so you can see that these two bars are vertically shown in two columns how can i customize this toolbar when you move to this toolbar we have this ellipse button place your pointer on it and right click and when you do so we have edit toolbar this gives you the customized toolbar dialog box and you have the option to customize this toolbar another way to get access to this dialog box that is the customized toolbar dialog box is to move to the menu bar and click on the edit tab and then we scroll down to select toolbar and this also brings out this beautiful dialog box and then you have the option to control this dialog box and based on the comments we are to customize the panels and also customize the toolbar as well as to customize keyboard shortcuts and menus and we are going to glance through all these options so this is our second option which is the toolbar now in this toolbar you have some screen tip here it says drag and drop tools or their groupings in the toolbar list view move access on use or low priority tools into the extra list when enabled extra tools will appear in their own slot at the bottom of the toolbar so this is the screen tip that you have and that is going to guide you to customize your toolbar now when you come below this toolbar option these are all the tools available in this particular toolbar so we have the first group which consists of the move tool and also the artboard tool and that is the first tool here we also have this group that consists of the single row macro tool the rectangular macro tool the electrical macro tool and this is the second group you see here and when you move below we have other groups here which consist of their individual commands now how can you customize this toolbar when you take the first group you can rearrange the tools you can also rearrange this tool in this group so when you get access to a particular group you can change the positioning of these tools available in that particular toolbar and that is the first customization you can apply the second option is to rearrange the group as well so the first group in this toolbar is the move tool and the artboard tool i can move this group above this first group so when i place my mouse pointer on this group i have to make sure that there is a blue border around this group and that shows that this group is selected then you click drag and when you get to the top of this first group you see a blue tick line then you release the mouse and this is going to move this group to the top of this pin and now we have the move to move to the second position and when you move back to the workspace you can see that that is the customization that has been applied now we have this macro to being the first option in the toolbar and the move tool has been moved to the second option you can also move the lasso tool to the second positioning so make sure that there is a blue border around the group click and drag and when you get to the position where you have this thick blue line you release the mouse and this is also going to change the positioning of this group so when you move back to the workspace now the lasso tool becomes the second group in the toolbar and we have the macro tool as the first group and now the move tool has moved to the third group so based on this practical experiment you can change the arrangement of your tools and also to rearrange the groups of commands in this particular toolbar now another way to customize your toolbar is if there is a tool which you don't normally use or it is low priority tool in the workspace you can move that tool to the extra tools 
currently you can see that i've moved the polygonal lasso tool to the extra tools so if i want to move the quick selection tool i can click and drag and position it in the extra tools if i want to move the magnetic lasso tool click and drag so all these tools are not going to be available in this toolbar but they can be accessed in the extra tools and as the screen tip says if we enable this particular tool which is the extra tools it will appear in their own slot at the bottom of the toolbar so let's assume that you want these tools to move back to their original location you can click and drag and move it to their group and release and now we have it among its group so you select So I have moved all these tools back to their original location and as I said if you have some tools in these individual groups which you don't normally work with it you can move it to the extra tools and that is going to take it off from this toolbar that we have here. Now when we move below this option we have this show option here and we have this ellipse button. Now this ellipse button is what you see in this particular toolbar. If I click on it, this is going to disable this option and you are not going to see it in this toolbar. The same applies to this option which is the foreground and also the background colors. If I click on this, this is also going to take this option from this particular toolbar. And the next one is this particular tool which is also available in this section. When I click, this is going to deactivate and when I click, it's going to bring back all these options. And we also have this when i click it's disabled this option that is also going to enable this option so the show option helps you to activate or deactivate some tools in the toolbar so now i'm going to enable them you can also click on this checkbox that says disable shortcuts for hidden toolbar extras so let's assume that you put some toolbars in this extra tools pane and you want to disable the air shortcut you can click on this checkbox and when you are done with this and all other customizations for your toolbar then you click on done so we have customized our toolbar and also customize our positioning of panels or our panels location now the next option we are going to target is keyboard shortcut and also menus now to get access to this dialog box, you can hold control key, the shift key, the alt key and the letter K. Now this keyboard shortcut is going to open the keyboard shortcut and menus dialog box. If you can't recall this shortcut, you can move to the windows tab and then choose workspace and then in these options you can select keyboard shortcut and menus and this will also drive you to the same dialog box we had with the keyboard shortcuts now in this dialog box you have a variety of options that can also help you to customize your workspace now i'm going to select the keyboard shortcuts tab and then in this option we have shortcut for currently application menu is selected you can click and we have panel menus tools and tax space now in application menus you get all the menus that you see on the menu bar so the first option that you see is the file menu when you click this gives you the application commands and also the shortcut that is associated with it so when you scroll down and let's assume that you want to change these default shortcuts available in this window Let's assume that this new command, the shortcut is Ctrl plus N. If you want to change this particular shortcut, you click and that is going to select this shortcut option. Then you can erase it or you can type your own keyboard shortcut in it. And when you do that, you can click on accept and add this shortcut to your list. But I want to maintain the default shortcut. Now, when you scroll down, we have other options that do not have any keyboard shortcut associated with it. I'm going to illustrate an example to you. When you look at this 
option which is quick export as png this particular option do not have any shortcut i'm going to click and i can assign my own keyboard shortcut now when you type a shortcut that is already available this will prompt you that p is an invalid shortcut i'm going to hold ctrl plus p this also tells you that ctrl p is already in the use and will be removed from file print if accepted so this particular shortcut is already existing if you want to accept that particular option meaning you are going to replace this particular shortcut you choose this option and if you don't want to do so you choose undo changes but i have a shortcut which is not available and i want to use that for the quick export as png so i'm going to hold ctrl shift one so you can see that this keyboard shortcut is not available in photoshop therefore when i use this shortcut it has matched this particular option therefore when i click on accept and when i'm working within my photoshop and i want to export as png in a quick way i can hold this keyboard shortcut and that is going to open this option to me so you can navigate through these options and if you have any shortcut you want to apply for your individual commands you can do so but you have to make sure that that particular shortcut is not already used or is not related to any command in adobe photoshop so when you are done with any customization you make sure you click on asset and that is going to take effect so these are the options under the file menu you can move to the edit tab also you can make some changes to some shortcuts but not to waste too much time we are not going to walk through all this but i believe that the first illustration that i've done can guide you to take your time and walk through and change some keyboard shortcut if you want to do so the one that you think might be familiar with you you can go through and edit them in this individual application menus when you click on this and choose panel menus we also have panel menus so these are some of the panel menus especially you can go to the layers tab and when you go to the layers panel we have all these options and you want to change some keyboard shortcuts the shortcut that can be used to create a new layer is shift ctrl n if you think that this shortcut can't be memorized by you you can click and change and after that you click on asset but i am going to maintain this default shortcut so you walk through if you want to apply some shortcuts or customize some shortcuts within the panel menus you can do so the next one is when you choose tools these are the tools that we have in this toolbar so when you look at the rectangular macro tool the shortcut is m if you think m is something you can't recall you can click and change and then you click on accept and i believe you are understanding the way you can customize your keyboard shortcuts in photoshop when you move to and as you can see the shortcut for move is v but we assume that the move tool will have a shortcut of m but it is being related to the letter v if you think move to should have a letter m you can click then you can move to the rectangular macro to select type r and click and that is going to take effect therefore i have changed the letter representation that is the shortcut letter representation of these two commands if i go to my workspace and press any of this letter m is going to be my move tool so this is how to customize keyboard shortcuts in adobe photoshop the next shortcut for these options is the tax spaces and this is for select and max content aware fill and then we have neural filters and when you click on this it expand and all these tax spaces have their shortcut if you think you want to change any of this you can click and change you can click on this tab or you can choose accept and all these are going to take effect so this is how to customize your keyboard shortcut now we are left with the last option which is menus so we click on this tab now this also selects application menus but in these options we have two options available now how can we change or customize application menus when you look at the file menu we have all these options and we have this visibility when i click on this 
this is going to hide the file menu on the menu bar and i'm going to use one as an example i'm going to hide this browse in bridge under the file menu and also i'm going to hide open recent and now another customization i want to apply is the new command i want to give it a color which is red and then the open command i'm going to give it a color which is orange and then i'm going to change the color for close and i'm going to give a color of green and then when i'm done with this i'm going to click here and that is going to take effect so i have done some customization to the file menu and when i'm done i can click to collapse and when i want to expand i'll click to expand click to collapse i have other application menus here i can go to the edit tab if i want to change a color for any of these options i can select and then choose a color and if i want to go to the redo choose a color and when i'm done i can click on this tab to take effect and then collapse this particular option so you can walk through all these individual application menus and apply some colors or make them visible or invisible per your preference and when you are done you can click on ok there's another option which is panel menus so we have this panel menus so when you choose layers you can also change the color for layers that is the new layer any option that you want to apply you can do so if you want to hide certain things you can do that in this option so when you are done you collapse whatever menu that you made that changes to and when you are done you move to the top right corner and click on this ok button now we have customized our panels that is we have create some panels location which are visible in this workspace and also we've customized our toolbar and customize our keyboard shortcuts and the menus now all these customizations have been completed that is based on my preference you might have your own preference depending on how you work within adobe photoshop but based on how i work within adobe photoshop i am done with or i have completed the customization of this workspace based on the shortcuts menus toolbars and also the panel location now that this is done how can we have this custom workspace saved in adobe photoshop so we move back to the top right corner and click on this workspace icon and then we are going to choose new workspace we have this dialog box let's give a name to this now after that we are going to check these boxes because we have customized these options then we click on save now this has been saved as a custom workspace when i move back to the workspace icon this is currently selected now let me show you something here if i choose essentials essentials workspace is also going to have this same customization why because when i was customizing these particular options which are the panel locations the shortcuts the menus and the toolbar essentials was selected so it is also going to have this same customization but for us to ignore this customization for the essentials i'll move back to the workspace icon and then choose reset essentials and then we are going to have the default workspace of essentials in this adobe photoshop interface now when i move back to the icon which is the workspace icon essentials is selected and i can choose my workspace that i just created and that is going to bring back all the customization that i apply to this particular workspace so now this is my toolbar and these are my panels which are located in their individual sections now when i move to the menu bar and click on the file menu you can see that the colors that we gave to these individual commands are activated i gave a color to the new the open and also the close you can go back and personally choose different colors for any of these commands by the way that you want them to be in your workspace so you can see that i have all these colors taking effect now i also gave a shortcut to the quick export as png which is Control shift one 
now when i hold this keyboard shortcut you can see that i have this dialog box open and i can save this as a png file so this particular canvas that i have with this particular object when i hold this customized keyboard shortcut which is relating to the quick png export has given me this dialog box to save this particular image as a png in a directory on my computer system so you can see how this keyboard shortcut is working this is a customized keyboard shortcut that was created personally by me so now at this point in time you can see that all the customization that we apply has taken effect the shortcuts the menus the toolbar and also the panels so when you look at this toolbar you can see that now the move tool is not in this position rather it is positioned at the third position in their individual groups so now we have the macro tool and we have the lasso tool before we have the move tool based on how we customize in the customize toolbar dialog box so this is how to customize a workspace in photoshop that is personally and this is an advanced and in-depth tutorial we have taken our time to illustrate in this particular video now that we have created our custom workspace let's assume that we are not around and a colleague or a friend get access to this photoshop interface and mistakenly or intentionally started to close our panels and trying to position them in different sections and when we came back to use this adobe photoshop we realized that the way we customize our workspace is different we have a different look right now so how do we get back to our customized workspace that is a very simple task what you do is move back to the workspace icon and then since our workspace is selected we can choose reset workspace and this it will bring back all our customized interface and we have our panels our toolbar our customized file menu and also our keyboard shortcut available so when i move back to the file menu i still have all these colors given to my options let's assume that this is chained to essentials and when i go back to my workspace i have all these options available and also all the panels are activated so when there's a different workspace selected this is not going to affect my workspace because i have customized it and it is available in these options so anytime there is a close of these panels rearranging of these panels what i'll do is to go back and choose reset and i'll have all my panels toolbars and everything organized and arranged in adobe photoshop workspace so now we've customized and created our workspace and also we've learned how to reset a workspace when there is a change or any other modifications we are not aware to our workspace we can easily reset this workspace and get back every customization that we have in adobe photoshop now let's move to the last option how can we delete this workspace if we don't want to use it anymore or it is not important right now in adobe photoshop very simple move to the workspace icon and then make sure you choose a different workspace if this workspace is selected and this is the workspace that you want to delete and you try to choose delete workspace you have a different workspace selected even when you click on the drop down arrow you can see that this workspace is active therefore you don't have the option to select this workspace so anytime you want to delete a workspace you make sure that that particular workspace is not selected you choose a different one and that will give you the option to delete whatever workspace you want to delete so in this option i can't delete our custom workspace but i can delete any of these default workspace so let's move back click and i'm going to choose essentials and now essentials workspace is selected so now when i click and choose delete now i have the option to delete this particular customized workspace 
if you don't have that selected you choose this option and then you select it and delete now if you have so many custom workspace available then the best option is to choose all custom workspaces and now when this is selected if you have two or three workspaces created when you choose delete you have the option to delete all these workspaces so the option says do you really want to delete all the custom workspaces we are going to choose yes and now when we move back to the workspace icon we don't have this particular custom workspace available now it is essentials so my cherished viewer your comment has been answered in this video we've looked at how to customize the workspace with panel customization keyboard shortcuts and menus and also we customize the toolbar and we save it as a custom workspace and graphic designs and video editing skills channel appreciate your comments and we thank you for being part of this great community please i hope this video has been of helpful please give it a like share and also drop your comments in the comment section and let's have some conversation thank you and we shall meet in our next video